Matthew, I tell you, pal, I don't, I don't know about this Captain Marvel movie. Eh? You know, we saw it on Friday. It's now Sunday. It's only two days later, and I, it, it's so disappointing. I can't even remember the film. Yeah, and you didn't even say to anything. Like you didn't. There's nothing that would have taken your memory away. Exactly. <laughs> which, is, which we should have thought, you know. It's that forgetful. I think you need to say, PJ, I think you need to have a drink with me here because it might just jog your memory. Your, your memory lies in the bottom. Mm. <laughs> so PJ really doesn't like this film. Yeah. I actually like it. Well, you know, Matthew, you'd like a piece of cut if someone wrapped a ribbon around it. For movie reviews by two guys who've watched Body of Evidence a moosey lot of times, like and subscribe. Hey, I'm Matt. And I'm Peach. And welcome to That Movie Review, also known as TMR. My word, Matthew, so uh, where do we start with this film? Let me give my case first. Okay, here's the pros, uh, in my eyes at least. Well, I need to put on a pot of hot coffee. <laughs> we might be a while. <laughs> no, really, I think it was a fun film. I do think that it feels more of an earlier sort of MCU film. It doesn't feel like a film that, that should have been released this late in the game. Especially a film just before Endgame. I mean, that's what Black Panther was in Infinity War last year. It was like almost like a precursor to this big event. Mm -hmm. And this felt, this feels more akin to Ant Man and the Wasp than to Black Panther. You know what I mean? Ant Man and the Wasp was good. It wasn't mind blowing, it was good. Mm -hmm. And that's how I feel about Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel is definitely not the game changer it's been touted as. And I will agree with Matthew in saying that this movie seems a lot more like, a, like the kind of film that would have been found in the initial developmental stages of the Marvel Universe. You know, fuck it, I'll even revisit, happily revisit um, Iron Man 2 and Full the Dark World before I watch um, Captain Marvel again, in all honesty. I feel you, I feel you. Um... I'm also of, of the nature that, uh, that this, this, this might not be one of those that you revisit all the time. Uh, although I will watch it again. I probably will watch it again. Uh, and I will actually watch Thor Dark World again. You know, I was, I'm in the minority of the people that actually found that a pretty decent film. And then I went online and I realized nobody fucking hates it. <laughs> but I think everybody can agree that Iron Man 2 was crack. <laughs> Iron Man 2 was terrible. Mickey but... Rock looking there like a sticky belt down going to uh, electric fucking... Mm -hmm. Whoops it down. There were some really, really sweet special effects in this film. Um, not only the ones used in the action sequences, which were pretty cool. The whole sequence, that fight sequence with the scroll on the train. I thought that was cool. Um, and <laughs> it shows how much you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was pretty cool. That was one of the cuckest fight scenes I've ever seen. Uh, the train, but there was no dynam dynamism in that film. The directors were like, I mean, honestly, that, that, that train scene looks like, like it should have been in speed in 1990. <laughs> speed 3. Speed 3. Like, where is Sandra yeah. Bullock? <laughs> we have believe they also did a good job was with the de-aging uh, of Nick Fury and Agent Coulson. Um, although there was a few scenes where Coulson looked a bit like even. Mm -hmm. Jackson's actually quite a bit of a standout in this film actually. Like he's, he had a moosey lot of fun with Nick Fury in this film. It's, it's a pretty sort of um, Avengers Nick Fury. So he's, he's very light-hearted. He doesn't have like the weight of the world on his shoulders just yet. Mm. Um, it's his first sort of like interaction with otherworldly or, um, races and, and you know superheroes. Yeah. So he's still wet behind the ears, but it, it's, a lot of the humor comes from him. So it's a very different Fury you see in this film. The problem is, of course, that the movie is not called Captain Marvel and Nick Fury. It's called <laughs> Captain Fucking Marvel. True. And so even though we've got a DH Nick Fury who might be lending some nice band to the film, he shouldn't be... We shouldn't be in a position to say, well, you know, Sam Jackson was really fantastic in Captain Marvel. <laughs> in Captain Marvel. Let me tell you, that, that was really the standout. That's not the way it's supposed to be. The standout is supposed to be Brie Larson. And there's nothing wrong with what she does or um, her acting. In fact, she's, she's funny. She's pretty good. She's pretty good. You know, the, the real fault here, and Matthew will probably disagree, but the fault here lies with the filmmakers and mainly in the form of the directors. The directors, the two directors, the mm. guy and the girl, and the writers, which are basically a bunch of women and one male. And um, it's, it's very collaborative um, efforts that, that are lackluster. Yeah. That, that are, thank you, Matthew, that are lackluster and that don't do this movie any fucking favors or power. For any of you nostalgic people out there, for anyone who has a real love for the 90s, you might like this film, you know, in the fact that it recreates the aesthetics of the 90s along with the music of the 90s. Hmm? Yeah, no, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. A lot of it is like really on, on the nose, really like that. Yes, that, that one, that one no doubt song playing yeah. while he's kicking hat. You know, yeah. they, what's it? No doubt song. It's like 
Uh, just the girl. Like, even her brains, no? no? Just the no. girl or something? Like, I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just know it was... Like you said, it's very on the nose. It's very... They really want to like, listen, we are in the 90s now. You need no, to understand. We are <laughs> in the fucking <laughs> 90s. <laughs> 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 and you're just like, oh my <laughs> god, okay. Shit. A stand-up performance, and I think everyone can agree about this, or agree on this, is Ben Mendelssohn. Mm. Um, who plays Talos, the one Skrull, the head Skrull, and he's a very good villain. Later on in the film, you know, there's, there's a few scenes in that, that I actually I really bought into his story a lot more than I did Caps even, you know what I mean? Can I call it? I'm not going to call it Caps. No, it's not like fucking Cap. No, Cap is Captain America. Captain America. Yeah. I'm going to call it... Maybe Cap... I'll call it Cap... Cap... Uh, Cap... Maybe Captress? Captress? <laughs> hey! Do you want the SJWs on our fucking channel, please? This is one of those films that you know, it's okay to drop someone smack bang in the middle. Remember mm -hmm. in Thor Part 1, they dropped you smack you bang in the middle. You had the land of the planet all of a sudden and then they start showing you how it all happened, right? Correct. Now, they tried to do something similar here with Captain Marvel, but to, with very little success. Bad editing, if I can call it that, poor pacing, uh, and a number of other things just have you quite dis... Well, I was very disengaged. For the first one hour, I was very disengaged because of the way the story was structured and the way it was going back and forth. The second half of the film is stronger. Oh, absolutely. I and mean, that's the one where, you know, shit starts like moving at a, at a more brisker pace, I guess. That's the only reason it's getting a score from me, even, is because of the Ooh. second half. The second half is what redeems the film for me. So this film follows the obvious Marvel formula of blending comedy and action. And it does a competent job in that regard. The action is pretty decent uh, at times. At sometimes I feel it was underwhelming and sometimes I feel it was quite epic, especially near the end. Uh, but I'll get to that in a moment. But the comedy was done pretty well. I think Sam Jackson was a vehicle for a lot of the comedy here. So it was Talos. Um, he had some great moments. That's I think that's a lot of why Ben Mendelsohn is like a, a favorite in this film. His comedy was, was on point. Um, but there were some times where it was like borderline silly and stuff. Mm. Uh, a lot of people, mm. a lot of people love the inclusion of Goose, this cat that you get introduced into in the in the film. The cat has on fire, cat at the post, I believe. There's a lot of silly, silly shit that they, they sort of bring across in this film, and and it's now it's now canon. Mm. Everything they introduce in this film is canon to the to the to the ten years that Marvel has been building these characters. Uh, and, and some of it is a... <laughs> like I looked at it and I was like, oh wow, really? Wow. Is that? You know, I read somewhere that uh, Disney is rough, that Disney is upset with people with Brie Larson because of the comments she made, you know? Mm -hmm. And with uh, Kevin Feige, you know? Apparently, because, and, and I can imagine now, I mean, just because of what you, you just said, you know? I mean, yeah, what I'm implying, you'll see when you watch it. Yeah, I mean, if you're saying this is part, and this isn't a, this is not bad shit to be part of canon, but it's a little bit silly. It's, it's, kind, of, silly, it's, yeah. it's kind of like taking just, it's, 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 you're not taking <laughs> a shit on your franchise, but you are farting in it's stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and she's like, lovely like, on the couch, and you're coming fast, and you're like, hey, as she turns around, yeah, you're pooping your baby fart, and you're like, ha, 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 ha. Isn't that funny? And it's canon now. One of the other things, obviously, that is worth speaking about is the fact that this is, you know, this is supposed to be Marvel's girl power movie. You know, this is supposed to be Marvel's Wonder Woman, except, you know, Wonder Woman had Wonder and Captain Marvel's got, well, no Wonder. Captain Marvel is constantly a woman in a man's world. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's fine to do that, but, but the ham-fisted and so obvious manner in which the filmmakers try to drive this concept in your face is just... It's laughable. So it's almost like painting just men in a cut light. Yeah. Like you know what for, for, for the sake of for the same point. Correct. And 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 what I'm all for girl power and empowering women because I mean representation and all of that yeah. things. because um, I mean uh, I have friends that took their daughters to go watch it and they literally came out and be like, Daddy, I wanna be Captain Marvel when I grow up and that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. I love that. You know what I mean? I don't think it should be done at the expense of men. Exactly. And that's what I, I'm that's what I, I think what a lot of women don't understand when men Talk about this all the whole men, men are trash and women and stuff. But right. I could be getting to cut with what I say, you know. Fly with the cup. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it should be done at men's expense. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there is a lot of important men in women's lives. The same way there's a lot of important Absolutely. women in men's lives. You know what also made Wonder Woman really good is because they had all of those things in Wonder Woman as well, yeah. albeit it was an earlier period of time. But they they grounded it with a solid character in Steve. Yes. And, and she. She saw humans through Steve's. Yeah. So she. So there was that singular person. That singular person, and he was a good guy. 
Yeah. So there was like maybe something to balance out, you know, all this bad guys in in, yeah. in, in Captain Marvel telling you, oh, you're a woman, you want to do and this. And I mean, fuck, there are so many bad guys in this they movie. Are. I mean, I spent the night, yeah. this, the only menu scene here is so domestic. Oh, yeah, this is everyone's nice in the world. Tell me. It's like a truckload of nice. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like she's a, a nine magnet, basically. She just attracts all these nice. Wow. Nine magnet, huh? As a self contained film, I quite like Captain Marvel. Um, I think it was, it was decently executed. With Captain Marvel now included in the MCU, I'm not entirely sure. If it's one thing this film drives on me, that she is OP as fuck OP standing for overpowered so I really hope that she's not going to be like this sort of tram card that now gets introduced into in game and she just she comes in and she's like listen where's Thanos there he is and then she just takes him and she just wipes the floor with his hat and everybody goes over and everybody's okay I hope she's included in the in game um, to a certain degree but as a team player I don't think I don't believe she should be the one to take out Thanos I really don't because that would just be cutting on the franchise, I believe. I disagree here with Matthew. This film cannot survive as, as a self-contained film. It is definitely part of the bigger entourage of films, which is what it is also supposed to be. Mm. But with all the, but with the film that sports the developmental issues of the initial lot, it's rather disappointing. And it's, it's quite unacceptable to come in this late in the game, before in-game, before in-game, to show us a film that is actually laden with issues that fails to engage its audience for at least a solid hour before eventually picking up. I mean, that's amateur night out, folks. You can't, you know, you can't, you can't want really to give us something like that now. Matthew's right, she is definitely, I mean, she is way too powerful, and we can only hope that she's not just gonna, you know, take, you know, rather Thanos up in a, in, in, in lots of Vaseline and, and, and shine where and shine and shine the sun doesn't shine. Am I supposed to know where that is? <laughs> <laughs> so I think even though I disagree with PJ uh, and his outlook on the entire form, I do hear him and I understand why he doesn't like it. I do like it though, and I'm gonna give it 7 out of 10. That's a filler. I honestly don't care too much about Captain Marvel. I want to see Endgame. And you've got a mind to go, people. When you came out of this movie, Wumpy over here was prepared to give it an 8 out of 10. He was so fucking excited. And I knew he just had to sleep on it for a little while to drop down to 7. I, however, am going to give Captain Marvel 5 out of 10. This is a fucking decent unit, in my opinion. It, and it's right down the set, it's a decent unit. This guy knew half his work. This doctor is going to operate, and you're going to freak.